Okay, let's say you just made an amazing scene and now you want to render it in the best way possible. Well, this is a tutorial for you. So the first thing you wanna check is if you click on these three dots, do you have move a render queue? If you don't, don't worry. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go over here to edit, plugins, type movie render queue and make sure this is checked. If it isn't, check it. It'll prompt you to restart, restart your engine and then you'll be right back here with this being selected. Now, once that's all done, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click this clapperboard. And this is what's gonna pop up. Now, I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it easily. Now, what you wanna click on is this unsaved config right here. And then you're gonna get prompted with JPEG, deferred rendering and output. We are going to want to add more to this. So let's go over to the settings button and let's add anti-lazing, console variables, and .exr. Now, a few tutorials will tell you to get rid of the JPEG, which is totally fine if you want to. Um, I personally like keeping the JPEG only because it's a good way of checking the image while it's being exported. Um, a lot of times in Unreal, it'll get exported with artifacts or you'll have like a glitch that'll look the wrong way. And there's really no way to check that uh, assuming the preview is working the way it should, which sometimes it doesn't without exporting a JPEG because a .exr is not readable in a normal desktop format. So I usually export the JPEG for that reason alone. If you don't need that reason, then get rid of the JPEG. It'll just save you time. So in this scenario, the .exr comes the way you want it. JPEG also comes the way you want it. Deferred rendering is not something you worry about. However, let's go over anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is a perfect tool because what it's doing is it is re-exporting the same image multiple times, um, looking at different formats to make sure that there's no artifacts or issues with the image. So when it comes to spatial count, I will usually put this at 36 and then temporal count at six and then override anti-aliasing, check. Now you're set up, this is going to greatly increase your render time. So if you're rendering very slowly, you want it rendered faster, you can bring down this number. I mess around with it often. I would say 36 and six tends to give me the best results. I've also done 12 and 12. Uh, I've also done 16 and six. If you are render time is very slow, this is probably the reason. So I would mess with this first. But for the best results that I've seen, 36 and six will do. And then next you wanna to go to console variables. This is a little time consuming, but I will teach you how to save this configure so you don't have to do it multiple times. So in this case, you're gonna to wanna to click plus and then open. Oh, I apologize. You're gonna delete this. You wanna to go to console variables, click plus, and then plus, and then plus, and then plus, and just keep going down. Uh, what, what is that? Six maybe? Uh, let's go with seven. Now, I will go through the console variables one by one for you. Um, and type them in. But what they're doing is, is just pushing the console to make sure that the image is the best possible version it can be, as well as forcing certain variables onto the export. These variables can be something you can play with because I'm gonna go over motion blur, motion blur quality. So don't feel like you need to use the exact numbers I use. However, the numbers I'm going to input tend to give me the best results, but I think you should always test it out. So I'm gonna type in R dot screen percentage and make this 150. Um, basically this is upscaling the image to 150 and then it is downscaling back to HD. So the image is gonna be 150 times HD and then it's gonna be downscaled into HD, which just makes it a lot more crisp. Um, I'm gonna do R dot ambient occlusion dot denoiser. This is just a denoiser. We can put this to zero. And then I'm going to do ambient r dot ambient occlusion. Let have it right away without me having to type it. It will. Uh, this will also be zero. And then we'll do diffuse indirect light, which is going to make our light a little softer. noiser or sorry it will denoise the soft light um, reflections denoiser r dot reflections 
this will also be zero. And then we'll do reflections dot denoiser temporal accumulation. And then let's do r dot shadow denoiser. And then let's go with r dot shadow. Or temporal accumulation and then just keep adding a few more on here this is where we're going to go for global illumination so let's do r dot global illumination temporal accumulation also zero and then we'll do motion oh sorry r dot motion blur quality there we go. I'm going to put a four for this one. Okay. For this next one, we can do r dot motion blur separable. We can make this one a one. And then for this one, we'll do r dot depth of field quality. Do a four. Bloom quality. Let's do five. Tone mapper quality. Also, some of these won't necessarily affect your image, but they are kind of done in a wholesale manner. So sometimes when you're creating your projects, it'll come in handy. Uh, per example is ray tracing. If you don't have ray tracing enabled with your project, these last ones won't necessarily matter, but they also won't affect your scene either. So it's nice to just type these in now. And if you ever create something with ray tracing and then use the preset that we're going to create after this, it will be already inputted for you. So you don't have to input it again. So I do suggest you add these last bits in. So we're going to do ray tracing reflection shadows. I'm just going to add these last in, then we can do the numbers after. We're going to have to add one more in here. Um, let's do ray tracing reflection sample. So r dot ray tracing dot reflections sample percentage or sample per pixel. There we go. And then r dot ray tracing. Something like this is never fun for a bad typer like me. Shadows dot samples per pixel. And then the last one is going to be dot r dot ray tracing. Almost classic ray tracing global illumination. And that will be a denoiser. So the global illumination denoiser can be zero. Um, we can make these each 64 and then this reflections can be two. So now that console variables is done, we have all our console variables in, we can go over to output and we can change the output directory, which is where the files are going to be outputted. The file format will just be the name of the file. So in this case, it'll be sequence name frame number, which is fine for my purposes. And then the last one is output resolution. If you want to output, you know, 2.5K or 4K or you go crazy and do 8K, this is where you would do that. Also, you can even force custom rates and change this however you want. In my case, I personally will always go with the sequence, um, but you can change that in this as well. So now that that is done, what you're going to want to do is go to unsave configure and you want to click save preset. And then you can name this whatever you want. I will just do preset. I don't know what Omega have fun with it. Right. And then click save. And then now you have a preset, no matter what you do. Now you can always bring this into other projects. You can export it out as well. Um, it'll always be handy for you whenever you need it. So I definitely suggest you save this as a preset. The only time you'll come into trouble with this is when there's an upgrade to unreal, you know, like 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, um, there's a chance it won't be compatible with other versions of Unreal. But other than that, this works great. 
So definitely suggest you save a preset and then all you have to do is click accept and then go over to render local and you have exported your project. Um, just going back for any concerns that you might have, anti-lazing is going to slow down your rendering a lot. So I do want to reiterate the fact that if you reduce this number, you'll have a better chance of getting out a project faster. Or if your pro computer won't even do it, that will help a lot. The other thing that actually takes up a lot of VRAM is the output resolution. I've come into scenarios where I've been trying to export 4K and it will refuses, like my computer will just crash. Bring down the resolution, you know, 2.5K, 2K, full HD, try to bring down the resolution when you can because that usually will help with the vram which will then help you export your project um, those are the two issues that i usually run into that i have to fix but other than that this is a really good preset for you and it will always kick out some really gorgeous exports so give it a try please like and subscribe it helps a ton and catch you guys on the next one